Hello and welcome, foolish mortals. I have a question for you. Do you want to be a millionaire? Well, so would I, <laughs> and I can't offer that to you right now, but what I can offer instead is a chance to be a billionaire. Yes, that's right. Do you want to be a billionaire? If you weren't around for the who wants to be a millionaire craze at the turn of the millennium, it was an experience for sure. Who wants to be a millionaire mania was everywhere. And this is something that I will go a lot deeper into in a further topic. They had anything and everything from hats to t-shirts to CD albums. But again, we'll circle back to that later on. It is a villain's turn this time. Before you even begin the game, there's this mini game you can click on while you're waiting for the main game to load. And I thought we were already done with arachnophobia. I didn't expect them to carry over to this too. Anyways, moving on from all the spiders. To give a brief summary of how you play, there are 16 questions in total. Starting with $100, the amounts continue to double until you reach 1 million, or in this case, 1 billion dollars. There are certain points throughout the game that you can lock in your answers, so if you get $32,000 locked in, for example, but aren't sure what the answer is with the $64,000 question, you're still guaranteed to be able to walk away with that $32,000 before all the taxes are taken out, of course, but they don't include that in the winning spiel. That wouldn't sound as exciting as you won a million dollars. There's also three lifelines available to use once, each throughout the game, 50-50, which eliminates two of the wrong answers, call a friend, in this case it's Corella de Ville. Why is there a cannibal cove in Neverland? That's terrifying. Or in the one round you're playing against Corella, it's Chernabog from Fantasia. That's the most random connection. All right then, good to know we have the best villain connections to help us answer these questions. The third lifeline is to ask the audience, which gives you the data of what the audience thinks is the right answer. So as you can see, who wants to be a billionaire is literally who wants to be a millionaire with an evilish coat of paint and a few easier adjustments. If you get a question wrong here, for example, you get another chance to pick the right answer. Whereas in the real game, if you answer a question wrong, that's it, game is over. The other interesting note with this game is the questions themselves. Normally how the game is played, it goes from easiest questions in the beginning, and as you advance, they get a lot harder and more challenging. Here it's not the same case, and some of the harder, more tricky questions are in the middle compared to being near the end. These villains can be sneaky, what can I say? A lot of the time, the questions I got for the billion dollar question were insanely easy. Examples include Corella's, what commercial plays on the telly when the little beasties are watching? Of course it's Canine Crunchies, they have a whole jingle and everything. Or Hades asking what he's the lord of. Although technically, according to the real Greek mythology, he is the god of the dead, the underworld, and wealth. We love a complex god. You know I got my answers right for Hades round. The only one I'll admit I got stumped on was when it came to what animals Pain and Panic turned into, because they also do turn into chipmunks, but I didn't remember specifically where in the film that happened. There are 13 villains to play against, making it 13 different rounds you can beat. I will say though that Ursula's wasn't working correctly, so it kept giving me Yzma's instead, but being able to access 12 out of 13 defunct games, I have no reason to complain. It would have been cool to have seen Ursula's, but for me to not be able to access one out of the rest of them, that's still wonderful odds. It's only too bad that I couldn't defend my knowledge about The Little Mermaid, because I would have aced that too. <laughs> I'm also not sure if the questions repeat or if there's more questions or randomized differently because I only played each round once. Naturally, the villain you're playing again asks questions all about their own films and stories because why wouldn't they be the narcissist that they are? Now, I don't know what order they were available on the website, but the order I played was first with Corella asking all the questions about the Dalmatians. This is one of the more challenging rounds. I knew most of the questions, but one that stopped me was her one true love. Why are furs her one true love? Her character arc was always loving fashion and wanting to be a fashion designer. It's stuff like that that were a little common here and there that you needed to pay close attention. Next up was Frollo when his was extra interesting because besides him, Captain Hook and Yzma also had prizes at the end of the rounds. You were able to print out their version of a billion dollar, but if you got every single question right, you also got a nice computer background. This was the only one that I won. Represent Captain Hook. I love Captain Hook. It doesn't help that Tom Hiddleston also played him and that helped my love for Captain Hook further. I really don't classify Captain Hook as a villain. Peter Pan is a villain. Peter Pan is an a-hole, okay? And I will stand by that forever. He's an immature 12-year-old boy and he just torments Captain Hook. 
So that's a whole other rabbit hole I'll go down, defending Captain Hook and not defending Peter Pan. However, I can show off my only background that I got for who wants to be a billionaire. It's cute. I like it. I know that people don't really use these anymore, but I miss this element. I miss the downloadables and it was really fun to be able to go back. I'll probably go back and print all these out and maybe add them to my wall because although you can't see it right now, they are hidden. I do have some monster bucks that I got from Universal. I love these. I think these are so cool. I know they're so silly, but I love stuff like that. And the really great thing about this is it does give us a time frame because it's a series 2001. So this was definitely within the same time frame of the craze that was happening. And it makes sense with all of the random pop culture references in the questions. We also had Gaston, which I'll brag that I got every single question right without any help from the lifelines. Hades, as mentioned previously. Jafar, Lady Tremaine, Maleficent. Hey, wait a minute. Have Hades and Maleficent always been canon together? How far does this lore go? I thought this was a newer ship thanks to the Descendants. Scar, the Evil Queen, and the Queen of Hearts. Each game took about three minutes to complete, but if you played like I did, it took about an hour to get through all 192 questions. Let me just remind you that some of these answers to these questions are very unhinged. So here's some of my favorites. <laughs> Carrot Top. That's our current relevance here, pop culture wise. Carrot Top? <laughs> Did kids even know who he was back then? Was someone a really big Aaron Carter fan who worked on this game? I understand that he was very popular at the time, but not like insane popular. And it's really weird that he's featured within this game twice. His name and his song. And don't get me wrong, I am a fan and have been and always was. And I even got to work with him briefly for a few hours years ago which was phenomenal and he was so kind so i will always treasure that and may he rest in peace because it's a shame that he is gone in terms of him being a part of a villain's millionaire parody game that is really strange is this yours <laughs> If you want to play this, I found this through Flashpoint. Like I've said in many videos before, I am so grateful for Flashpoint's existence to the team that has been working on all these games to be able to keep preserving them and keeping them going because I didn't know this existed. I never played this back in the day and this was so much fun for me to discover. I didn't expect to find this and I'm very, very happy that I did. <laughs> I've covered quite a few trivia games this year already and still have plans to cover more trivia games. And with that, I think I have to figure out how much value billion dollars is to American currency. But until then, you can stay tuned for some more spooky fun. And as always, I hope you have a magical day and I will see you real soon. <laughs>